So we've gone through five warmth cues and five competence cues that you can use when meeting new people. And so now we need to discuss social cues that you should definitely not use when meeting new people, because if you use these, it's communicating absolute disinterest. So as a result, we need to be careful not to use them. All right, here's five leaning back or away. I mean, immediately, if you saw this on YouTube, I, it, it looked as if I immediately completely disengaged from the conversation. Or it looked like I think I'm in trouble or something like that. It's not communicating what you want it to if you genuinely are trying to be engaged in a conversation. So that's the first one. Instead of leaning back, let's lean in. Second, if you have your body turned oppositely, and we talked about this with fronting a little bit, but basically, if you really want to get to know somebody, do not have your toes and your torso facing a different direction unless you are walking with the person. That's pretty much the only time where this feels acceptable. Otherwise, if you're standing still, you should be facing towards them, your head, your shoulders, your toes, head, shoulders, knees. Okay, I'm done. Uh, it should all be facing the person in front of you. And so the third one that you should definitely not do, and this, I'm so guilty of this, is crossing your arms. Now, crossing your arms is so comfortable, right? It's so comfortable, it's such a relaxed position, but when you cross your arms, it's actually called a blocking social cue. And it's communicating, even if we don't realize it, it's communicating to our brains they are either not interested or they're trying to hide something. And so if you're having a conversation with someone, I know it might feel uncomfortable, but if you keep your hands at your side, it's going to feel a lot better for the person that you're trying to get to know. And you will probably find the same to be true when it happens, vice versa. Okay. So those are the first three. Absolutely do not do these social cues when you're trying to get to know somebody. The fourth one is do not have your cell phone out. <clears throat> but so what if there's an emergency? Well, I'll tell you this. If you have your phone out, and Simon Sinek has shown this before as well, even just the presence of your phone in a conversation with somebody, even if you're not looking at it, Make somebody feel as though you are distant, have better things to do, and are disinterested. And that you're splitting your attention, if nothing else. See, I'm not even looking at my phone right now, and you felt this. You can feel it right now. You're like, dude, why is your phone out? That doesn't seem appropriate. I agree. It's not. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, what if I put my phone face down on a table, if nothing else? I would say no. And they have done research to prove this near IL in uh, his book about being undistractable, talks about how even the presence in the peripheral of our eyes makes us more tempted to touch the phone and engage on it. And so if you're seeing someone else's phone, you're still feeling that too. You're feeling like, I, I don't know if they're all here with me right now, to be honest. So my recommendation would be keep that phone away in your pocket in your purse, in a backpack, whatever, don't have it out. And if you're worried about an emergency, then you could tell someone, you know, call twice, come up with a game plan beforehand. And, you know, there's times where if I'm going somewhere and it's a long drive, my husband will be like, hey, can you just text me when you're there so that I know? So of course, I'm gonna be like, hey, when I just sit down for dinner with somebody, hey, I just need to text my husband real quick, make sure that he knows I'm here. Boom, then I text, boom, it's in the bag, and then we're done. Everyone, know, everyone who needs to know where I am knows where I am. Then I can have a thoughtful, engaging conversation and dialogue with somebody else. Okay, so that's four. Number five is don't look elsewhere consistently other than making eye contact with the person in front of you. Now, I'm not saying stare them down, obviously, but it's a lot easier to make eye contact with someone when you're listening than when you're talking. So that's kind of an interesting dynamic that goes on. But if someone's talking, for sure, 
make eye contact with them and revert back to a slow head nod if you wanna encourage them to share more about something. If you're that person that's looking elsewhere, I've experienced this personally. If someone is consistently looking elsewhere, I'm thinking as I'm talking to them, do you not care what I have to say? Are, are you not interested in this conversation? Are you looking for someone else to talk to instead? That's how our brains perceive this directing your gaze elsewhere other than the person in front of you. Now, there's a difference between like glancing, but it shouldn't be so consistent that it looks like someone's about to grab your arm and pull you out of the conversation because you're so frequently looking elsewhere other than that person. So those are the five. Again, leaning back, having your body turned a different direction than the, pa the person facing you, crossing arms, having your phone out, and looking elsewhere are all five big no-no social cues when it comes to meeting new people or just having thoughtful dialogue in general.